really drawn me to Isaiah. Mm-hmm. And let's see. It's Isaiah 55, verse 10. It's got to start with verse 10. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. So regardless if God picks me to do a certain task, and I don't complete that task, so he's going to put that task in somebody else's lap. Right. It's going to get done, regardless. And a lot of people like, may think that they just messed their plan up or their walk with God's like, well, I, I, I messed it up, so I'm out. Mm-hmm. He had something specific for you to do. He still has that task for you to do, but if you never come back to him, that task is still going to get done. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting thought. And then, you know, I mean, Isaiah 55, the whole thing is just crazy. Yeah, because even after what you just read. I mean, it's just, what is it, 14 chapters, 13 chapters. It's great. And I don't, I don't know what Isaiah was, his context here, you know, why this was written, because I don't have my study Bible. Um, but Isaiah is a great book. It's a long book. Yeah. But it's, it's already a, in the 56th chapter here. I think it's 60 something chapters. Mm-hmm. But Jeez. it's a great book. Isaiah, I know for a fact that Isaiah doesn't even get his calling till chapter 6. <laughs> and he was one of the few prophets that actually went into heaven without dying. He was in the throne room. That's pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. He was one of the few. All right, let's kick it off. And apparently, tradition has it that uh, Manasseh had Isaiah tapped out. Never off duty. If you own a business, you're never off duty. You're never off duty I'm when you own your own business, never bro. Off duty. Here we are for MZBC, the podcast, um, September 1st, 2021. It is. It is September. Time keeps flying by, and we're trying to keep up. Yeah, so you, you I recorded the part you were talking about, Isaiah, right there to catch you, get you going. Mm-hmm. You're warming us up for what we're going to talk about today. Mm-hmm. Um, so Isaiah, he was an awesome prophet. I mean, he has a lot going on. Yeah. Isaiah is, is the one that got called up and um, said... Here I am, send me. Into the throne room of heaven. He was one of the few, I think, uh, was it Abraham or Moses? Uh, I think it was Moses. I think it was Moses that uh, he, God said, get down in the crack and I'm going to cover you up with my hand and walk by it. It said that added like 100 years to his life. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, he was one of the very few that actually got to go in the throne room. And I want to say it's chapter 6. And God's sitting up there. It's like, man, we need to do something. Who can want, who can I see him? And Isaiah's like, here I am. Send me. Oh, yeah. You're right here. Isaiah's commission right here in chapter 6. In chapter 6. Yeah. yeah. That, was his, that was his calling. He yeah. didn't even get called till six chapters deep. Yeah. That's pretty insane. So... You don't. You never have a day off if you own your own business. Is that what you just said? Yeah, you never day off. <laughs> well, you never have a day off if you're a pastor, and I don't own my own business at all. The business mm-hmm. chose you, sir. The business chose me. <laughs> it's interesting that you say that because you were just talking about call. And um, mm-hmm. last week when we met with Jordan, or two weeks ago now, we talked about the call. And it is. We took a we took a week. Took off. a hiatus. Yeah. yeah. What was the reasoning? Uh, not, you I said thought? I have no material, and I'm thinking, did you not live life this week? Oh yeah, I said I have nothing to talk about. That's it's like, did you not live life this week? <laughs> I, I told Sean today, I don't. I must have a boring life because I don't. I really don't have much to talk about tonight. But I knew if I told you 
You said, man, I've been attention. running around all day. It's like, yeah, but what? I've been running around here and talking to to church members and, and different things. So it's nothing that like throws like a really cool, interesting tilt to our story or anything exciting to talk about. It's just like life. And so what Sean told me, she said, it's because. Uh, your life is okay. Like you don't have anything happening. You're just living a normal it's not falling life. Falling apart. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, you're not falling apart. Like you don't have anything bad going on. It's just like you're living your life. So just be thankful for that. So I, I'm resting in the storms thing. coming, sir. Yeah, that's what they say: the calm before the storm. Mm-hmm. Hopefully not. I don't know any storms are on the horizon. Praying for those people down in New Orleans. So do you know anybody that lives down that way? Actually, one guy I talked to today, uh, old co-worker I guess uh-huh. we I used to do work for him had heard from him and hadn't done work with him in a while yeah, he called out the blue today and I figured I was going to hear from him because I actually got the call Saturday from somebody else but he had to make the call to me to get the repairs done mm-hmm. so I, I, I wasn't surprised when why he called and he said they have a company down there in New Orleans and he said it just decimated the entire place uh yeah they deal with lights and generators stuff like that and he said it just wiped them out nobody got hurt or killed no people he said but the business is it's gone oh yeah so he's packing up generators and stuff here and he's gonna run them down there this week so his employees and whatnot can have power at their house i have some uh friends growing up in the army that that's they're from New Orleans. That was their that was their home state, and so I checked in on them. Oh, they all seem to be fine. Not much going on there. So, yeah. hope everything is good. Their family. Uh, it was in. So we were talking. I'm sorry, I was a little distracted right there. I was looking at something. Uh, Hurricane Katrina came through 2005. Yeah, they I think that's to what the date. Said. I ate a couple. Yeah, of I was gonna say that. I didn't know that. My wife told me mm-hmm. that uh, the other day. We were watching it. It was so crazy. We got out of the army 2001 moved here uh, so Hurricane Katrina was 2005 my friend calls me when Katrina was coming because they were living in New Orleans at the time and he was like we're coming to Atlanta I don't know where we're somewhere my uncle lives there and he's like we're going to some little town called Jonesboro <laughs> I don't know where that is so I was like dude that's where I live and so they actually were able to come over to our house and hang out uh, when that happened so mm-hmm. this time when it all went down he said yeah my mom and dad are on their way up there to Atlanta again um, so I'm going to try to connect with them when they get here, hopefully. I don't know if I will be able to. I noticed. It'd be kind of cool. Uh, one of the neighbors in our neighborhood, there was three vehicles there I've never noticed before, and they mm-hmm. had Louisiana tags on them. So I just, I'm just assuming they were yeah. here because of the storm. Too. Definitely, definitely. Man, so what's been going on in your Jesus walk? You've been walking, walking well? <laughs> yeah, yeah, still, still listen. I still listen to it every night. Yeah. But actually, so I what was, is your? It's like I'm put you on the spot. What is your like daily routine? Because uh, as far as my Christian, your Christian life. daily routine. Because I know because uh, telling people all the time, like uh, when they're new Christians, you say you know you could pray to God, have a quiet time, all these things. Mm-hmm. But as you age, I mean, as I age. Uh, life gets so busy I find it hard sometimes to fit that in so how do you make it how do you fit it in what what I do is I don't have that half an hour set aside uh, but what I do is I've, I've got you version on my phone and I'm, I'm using my phone tonight because I'm in my service truck so I don't have my bag with me <laughs> but I do have my Bible with me yeah and so what I've been doing and, and I don't show anybody this, but the, the more you use you version, it lets you know. So I'm actually up to 993 days. In a row? Yeah. You see the numbers up top? Streak 993. And 156 the number next to that weeks. Is weeks. What is 419? That's my, my thing I come up with 419 fishing. Oh, okay. That was going to be my, well, it still can be the ministry name. It's Matthew 419. Make you fishers of men. Okay. So that's where 419. Gotcha. Man, I don't even want to embarrass myself and look on mine because my streak on that app would be zero. I don't ever use that app except when I, when I don't have my... And, and so if you, if you get, I think it's every 24 hours, <laughs> but it will send... 
streak one day. One day. <laughs> just open. You have to have one before you can get to two. Oh, that's so sad. But th- this, to me, is, I was like, man, I'm almost at a thousand days. And after a while, you once you start, yeah, like at a week, it'll say congratulations and have a little oh, okay. uh, thing in the background, like a firework yeah. go off. But I'm not, I don't even pay attention to that much anymore. I only see it because it's there when I open it. You can't help but see it. Well, you got to keep going now. You're almost at a thousand days. Uh, so every morning I wake up, I open this up, and that's what I see. And, uh, and this is Isaiah 54 17 today, which is no weapon forced against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the, I got to open it up because it's long. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication for me, declares the Lord. And earlier was Isaiah 55, and it, it was talking about when my word goes out for me, it's going to accomplish what I send it out to do. Mm-hmm. And ever, ever since I read it, that was it. So when I get up in the morning, I open up the word of the day, I look at it, Sometimes it sticks in there, and I can meditate it on all day long. Most of the time, no, it, it's not in there. I'll read it, and literally, as soon as I set my phone down, I forget. Mm-hmm. And then, just any opportunity I get to speak to somebody through the day, I'll take the opportunity. A little time, eight eight times. I'm going to go eight times out of ten. It's it's a little fruitful. It's it. I can. They'll carry on a conversation, or they'll add to it. I like when they add to it because it lets me know. It kind of lets me know their knowledge of it, mm-hmm. of the Bible. But then there's other days. It's, I'm literally alone all day. You know, nobody's there, which doesn't hurt my feelings sometimes. But usually, when I really get into it, is at night. When I lay down, Levi's in the bed. Levi stays in the bed. <laughs> Haley's laying down, I'm laying down. I'll turn my earphones on and I'll I'll just pick a pick a chapter like last night I started with Isaiah fifty four and just push play and set the phone over there and just lay there. Let it read to you. And just let it read. Mm-hmm. And I will have those moments where when everybody's asleep, I'll get up and I'll go to the living room and get, you know, kneel down in front of the couch I'll have those but usually that's like a, a battle going on if I'm in there doing that there's yeah. there's something really mentally challenging going on or like the other words of the day was our our fight's not against flesh and blood but against the dark powers the spiritual the dark uh, powers of the spiritual world I don't forgot word for word yeah. the principalities and all that <clears throat> but that's thankfully that's few and far between but usually I don't um, Haley's got to where she gets up early I think about 30 minutes before everybody else and that's when she does her thing mm-hmm. uh, I don't have that yeah I, I'm, I guess I'm I'm lucky blessed the job allows me more time in the mornings than I guess you have because you have mm-hmm. to get up, kids to school, go to a job site and work. Mm-hmm. I get up, kids to school, job site is the church. Mm-hmm. And so once I get here, I get into whatever I'm studying for for that week or uh, just like the Bible. Yeah, I do use that Bible app, but not days in a row. I need to get better because i got to compete with you now. You're up to 1,000. Well, if we're um, going to compete, I'm going to stop using it. <laughs> it's yeah, not a competition. The competition. <laughs> See, the only way I do things is competition. If you want to so. do that, then I've already won. Oh, yeah. You're right. You're already, you're already winning. Um, but a, yeah, but then, you know, when it really comes down to reading, I've read the Bible twice. Oh, Once I've had to cover do it. To cover. Yes. Once I had to do it for school. Uh, go through it. And then even before school, I started reading it. I mean, I started in Genesis 1 1 and literally just started reading it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I wasn't reading it to study it. I wanted to read it mainly to hold myself accountable. 
I'm like, because if I read all of this, I'm without excuse. Mm -hmm. So I was mainly holding myself accountable. In the most boringest book, I tell everybody. Leviticus. Leviticus. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say. I was I'm, like, this is like a lawyer talk. Yeah. Because it tells you the same thing the first three books just told you. Yeah. Anytime I go to like, I'm going to read the whole Bible, Genesis, Exodus, it's so exciting. And like, it's like a story and all these mm -hmm. cool things are happening. And then yeah. let my people go. Yeah. And Numbers and Deuteronomy. Then it's like, Leviticus. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty rough to get through that book. I honestly cannot confirm that I've ever read Leviticus from mm -hmm. chapter one to however many end in it. I yeah, I've, I've read it once. I had to for school, but the one time I did it for myself. Yeah, I tried when I was in seminary and finishing up that stuff. I would try to pick um, books that I enjoyed for the classes, like mm -hmm. John, Psalms, um, mm -hmm. Hebrews. It's kind of like a deep book that yeah. is fun to read and stuff like that so yeah it was just interesting in how you uh, did your uh, quiet time stuff because people always ask that they want to know when and how and so it's a it's a total um uh, it's a change in your life to do that because before you've never even thought about that yeah. and then making it a practice in your life it really does that, help me though yeah. if i'll start there yeah and then it becomes part of your life and it's just a habit that's yeah. right yeah it's just like breathing and eating and going to the bathroom it's like I have to do this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, it, and it will it really will change your life and a lot of times when I listen I'll be laying there and if I'm not on the verge of just going to sleep I'll hear something like for instance today on in 54 and I never really paid much mind to it let me get back to the verse there it says no weapon because even on here you got a guy there, and you can push play. He'll read the verse of the day to you, okay, and then give you his thoughts on it. And until I just like, well, I'm gonna check it out and played it, and it never really dawned on me. And this is the NIV version it says, "No weapon forged against you will prevail." I was like, oh, yeah, I, I thought it was no weapon formed, formed against you, but it's formed and forged is the same thing. So it's just something like that. If I'm laying in the bed and I hear it, I'll actually stop it, pick it up, and pause it, and then go back. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you could read it and read it and go over Jeremiah 29, was it 29? 29, 11. 11, over and over. But then there'll be that one time when you hear it, it's like, well, I never noticed that before. Yeah. Or John 3, 16, it's, uh, he's, I believe like he does with the two guys on the Damascus Road after his resurrection. He, you know, he'll open your eyes to that. He'll say, okay, I want you to know what this is now. Mm -hmm. and so he'll open your eyes to it and you'll... Like, See something oh, fresh that you never yeah. saw before, from the other times. And yeah. you could have read it 20 times. Right, right. It's like listening to a rock song over and over. It's like, oh, I never knew said that. <laughs> you know, 15, 20 years after it was written. Yeah. <laughs> It's been, uh, so how has your job, has your job been affected any by like the recent rise in COVID and all that? Because I know that for the last few months we've been operating pretty well. I mean, everything's been kind of flowing pretty good. People are coming back out. People are coming back to church. School starts. And now it seems like, I think I heard two days ago that the hospitals were at the, almost the same capacity as they were when the original uh, COVID started back in March of last year, 2020. Mm -hmm. Does that affect you any? Because uh, you're working around all these people. My medical reporter, who I listen to. Your wife? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't deal with the news. Uh, we, you know, we changed all our vacation plans. Yeah. Because of that. Apparently, Florida was just getting out of hand with it again. And I don't know if it was just the people or what not doing what they should or they act. Whatever, mm -hmm. whatever route they took. It was getting uncomfortable. So we changed all our vacation plan. It's like, why well, take a chance? Yeah. And now she actually sent me a text today. He said a 13 year old caught it in Georgia and died. I saw that. His father found him asleep. Well, found him dead in the bed where he went to sleep the night before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was like, I hope I never cross that road. Yeah. And so and they don't have vaccinations for five year olds. Yeah, well, they have them for 13-year-olds. 
I think 12 and over. But that's so another it's, discussion. Yeah, and it's like the business side. Now, there have been people that I, I interact with, they got it. And last year, when it really got hot and heavy, there were two drivers that I knew of. I didn't personally know them, but I could walk up to them and talk to them. You knew their name. Well, they died from it. Wow. Yeah. They, they How old were they? I think one guy was in his 50s. Okay. So, I mean, not too old. No. It wasn't we're we're close. Uh, better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then another guy, you know, then some guys I know they got it and they got over it. It, it was kind of a, a up and down deal. A uh, lady I deal with, she's in the DOT office, not for the state, but for the industry, film industry. Uh, she caught it. And it was kind of a bad deal for her because she was going to have rotator cuff surgery. Well, I guess before the surgery, they tested her. Well, she was positive, And as soon as she found out she was positive, I think she got sick. Mm. So it had to postpone that and then get over the sickness and however long you have to wait till after you get over it. So it was kind of a bad break there. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's been a lot of things being changed this week. I think the football team at my the school, the, where our kids go to school, the team they were supposed to play canceled today. I'm assuming that's because of COVID. I mean, there would be wild for they cancel. And then there's been uh, several across Clayton County that have had to cancel games and, and all these things. I just... Not I see the virtual to. thing coming back. You see virtual coming yeah, back I for see. schools? Yeah. I hope it's not for churches. I mean, I just, uh, it was okay because it was like new and we uh, did it and figured it out. And we were already live streaming, so that was okay. But man, since we've been back normal, it feels like at least some type of normal. I'm really not looking forward to having to go back to recording and all that kind of stuff. It was just, it was really different. You, did you ever preach one of those Sundays with no one in the audience? No, when you preach, people were here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, and it seemed like they just kept coming in. It's like, <laughs> Haley, where's all these people coming from? <laughs> it, it's it is a completely different deal. I I know most of the people in there, but when you're standing up there looking at them, it's like, it, it's like I didn't know there was this many people in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's different when you're up there looking back out at them. Yeah, it's completely different. It's but, but it's a, it's a good deal. We've like been uh, blessed at church for the, I mean, I would say 100% because there's been... Maybe well, we could knock tandem on, it one day. Knock on wood. There's been no one that's got COVID from church. There have been people yeah. at church that have got it and have stayed home and different things. We have people right now that um, tested positive. They're not sick, but they're positive. That's another weird thing about this this virus. You, you could be a host. You can be and positive and not have anything. And so hey, not, maybe these people need to be at least positive once in their life. <laughs> not with sickness of Maybe, course yeah. <laughs> just attitude <laughs> so I'm praying against uh, shutdowns and all those kind of things so, but, but as far as business no it hasn't hasn't affected no. it well that's good that's good because a lot of people it has been affecting them and stuff so uh, what else has been going on Try, as a as a Russell as a person <laughs> I've been trying to um, I've been working through I don't know if you ever experienced this in your trying to progress in your Christian walk. As you're walking and growing and you see people around you not, I guess, maybe not progressing as fast as you or not even progressing at all. They just see people stagnant stale. and kind of, yeah, stale, just there. And you know, scripture says about the lukewarm water, like, mm. you know, Revelations, it says the church, this church was like lukewarm, I want to spit you out. Mm. And I don't ever want to be that. And so it's a hard, uh, I guess a battle, I guess it's part of the challenge is, and you just said, the scripture I was going to say, so I had to flip to a different one, that we don't battle flesh and blood, that what we're battling are the spiritual things, you know, mm -hmm. principalities and rulers and all these well, things. And I have to remind myself that because when you're leading, and you're a leader, I'm a leader, when we're in a leadership position, you want people around you to be growing. You want them to be experiencing God on different levels than they experienced him last week and the previous week. And when you don't just see that happening, and it may be happening in people's lives, but when it's not on the forefront, when people aren't uh, just coming and telling you about it or or you see it in their life, you're like, am I doing something wrong? Are, are they living in something I don't know about? And or they could be going through the change and it's new. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a it's weird. <laughs> I mean, when, he, when you receive salvation, it's weird. Yeah, it's different. Because I knew I, when I got it, I was like, man, 
what do I even say? <laughs> you, you know, I mean, there was some time I'd just stay home. I didn't, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. I knew there was a change, but th- they may not understand what's going on with them. Mm-hmm. I guess kind of going through puberty. You, you're changing, <laughs> but you have no idea what's going on. <laughs> yeah, you want to stay home sometimes. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> Boy, you get your cracking. Yeah, you know, your voice is changing, and the hair's coming up in places yeah. it never yeah. had before. And it's like, yeah. what's happening to me? <laughs> the um, you know, scripture says that um, I guess salvation, Jesus, it gives you this unexplainable joy. Mm-hmm. And I remember that the fact that I just said I remember it is like I'm, it helps me explain what I'm about to say. I remember that feeling of joy, like when. When you were first, when you sat in the pew or when you were aware of and heard someone speak and you really understood salvation for the first mm-hmm. time, and were like, oh, wow, that's me. Like, I'm a lost soul. I'm a mm-hmm. person that's trying to do it on my own and I'm getting aggravated or I'm getting frustrated and all these things are happening. I need what this guy's talking about, what this person is talking about. Mm-hmm. And then you get excited because, wow, you just experienced this thing. Uh, lately, that is kind of, I'm looking for that. And I don't know why I'm looking for that because, like I said earlier, like I have nothing going on in my life. That's a good thing because there's no crazy things going on that I have to deal with. Any and, ca- let's say you don't have any chaos. I don't have any chaos. Because when in my you life. say I've got nothing going on in my life, well, I mean, I did shoot an 85 <laughs> um, last Saturday or Sunday in hey, golf, and that was amazing. You, need you know to nothing clarify. about golf, but I want you to know as there's a white ball. <laughs> now, now. No, no lie. I went to the river the other day and I waited. Well, it's right against the golf course, right? An old golf course. An old one, but there's fresh golf balls in this river, and I have no idea where they're coming from. <laughs> where I was at, I bet from from like a 100-yard stretch, I walked in the river and then up on the bank, I bet I saw 100 golf balls. Yeah. It's like, where are they coming from? Is there a driving range around there or something? Or the old, I've looked the on the map. Was? And I've actually looked upstream because the golf balls aren't going to come from downstream. Yeah. Unless it's up in Atlanta because South River is a spring fed right from downtown Atlanta. And it comes down through the cab and all that. And the, uh, I don't know. I really don't. But these are, most of them are white. But every now and then I'll see an orange one or a fluorescent green one. And I'll grab them for Levi. <laughs> you know, I'll just pick them up, stick them in my bag. Yeah, well, when you find any, just grab them for me because I always need something to chip around my house. Hey, and, I'll, I'll take you right now, and I bet I, there's 50 golf balls laying there. Yeah, you're right, though. I say I have nothing going on in my life, but I have good things. So a Sunday when church was over, went to lunch with the family, hung out, and my brother you and a friend of his. You didn't get mad at the waitress, did you? I did not. You know, we went to Wendy's. It was to go. We took it home, so there was no waitress to get mad at. I just went home. My wife brought me salad to the house. Um, but I went to go play golf with my brother and his friend. That was awesome. We had a great time. Um, everything is good. You know, so I, I, I guess what I'm, I struggle with is the church life. And you know, I'm not even struggling with it. I just, I'm trying to learn how to be content. I'm trying to learn how to be mm-hmm. just like keep pressing forward every day, even though every day there's not like this monumental victory that we experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I guess some, I don't even know if it's being a pastor or if it's just being a person that has walked with God for several, I'd say several, I mean 14, 15 years now. Um, I know what God can do. I know the experience. I know how he can work in your life. And you want people to see that. And when you don't see it, I don't know, it just it's, it gets kind of frustrating. And then kind of you start doubting yourself and all these things start happening. And so I had to go to this scripture uh, in Philippians because Paul wrote this from jail. I mean, you know, he's locked up. I mean, how can this guy have joy if he's in he's jail? He's in the place where he was sending the early Christians. The absolutely worst place. Like, it wasn't like a jail like today where now, you Now, it's not like the clink up there on Memorial Drive. No. Nah. You know, it's, it's like not a hotel in a cot. No. No. No, it's this is prison. Dungeon. Yeah. Light Dungeon's com- a good word. Light coming through the window was the only light he probably saw. You know, fight your bed with rats. Yeah. I mean, it was bad. And he, you and probably got more infection <laughs> in prison than you did outside. That is definitely true. Um, I believe that. But in, in chapter 2, and, and, and he's talking about Christ and Christ's humility and how he imitates it, and that's what we're called to do. And so... I was trying to get in that mindset earlier, like, who am I to have all these expectations when what I need to be is just content, I need to be humble, I need to be, uh, to persevere, just keep going and and see where God leads. And in chapter 2 it says, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ. Where are we at? 
uh, Philippians 2, right at the beginning. Uh, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one spirit and purpose. Uh, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility considers others better than yourselves. And so I just thought that was really good. Then make my joy complete by being like-minded. Because I've experienced it. says if you've experienced any of these things, any comfort, uh, any fellowship, any tenderness, any mm -hmm. compassion. I mean, I've experienced all those things through Jesus. And so in that mindset, then I have no right, I have no reason to ever be nothing but joyful and, and excited about what God's doing, even mm -hmm. if I don't see it. And that's a hard thing to do as a human. We want to see stuff. Yeah. You know, it's hard to not but, see it. Well, ironically, you know, it's ironic that we're talking about this. Is this past Sunday in life group, a uh, question come up. We got, we, what did we finish up? John? We finished one of the John. What chapter in John? I can't even keep up with them anymore. Uh, 13, uh, 14, John 14. Jesus comforts his disciples, and then I can't believe I forgot it. It's 14.6. Uh, tell him how to get there. You know, a question come up, and I, I don't remember the question word for word. But it's about that, that excitement of the Holy Spirit, the being in the mm -hmm. presence of God. And I told him, I said, I don't have that all the time. I said, I said it might be weeks, and I, I won't feel it. I said, but then I'll have that conversation. I said, and then, then the hairs on my arm start going up and, and tingling and up, up and down your spine. I said, yeah, then I know. Then I know the Spirit's there because whatever's going on, He wants to be a part of that or He wants me or that person to be a part of that situation then. I said, but you also have to keep in mind between Malachi and, was it Matthew? No, Mark. Mark. Yeah, Mark, Matthew, John. Is it Mark or Matthew? Matthew, first? Mark. Is it Matthew, Luke, first? John. Uh-huh. Uh, so between Malachi and Matthew... It's called the Maccabean, Maccabean, Macadamia, Mac Maccabean, Maccabean period. Mm -hmm. It's 400 years. That's a long time. God didn't say a word for 400 years. He didn't say a word. So if I go a week or two weeks and I don't have that electrifying feeling of his presence, I don't sweat it. Yeah. I don't sweat it. That's and good and I tell him, I was like, even I said, there's times when I'm reading to prepare for the lesson on Friday or Saturday for Sunday, I don't, I don't feel it. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading his word. <laughs> I said, but then there are days where I'm reading it and I have to stop reading. It's, a, it's just it's flowing. Yeah. So, you know, I'm content. And if a lot of the people I talk to, they're just uh, that 2% that just kind of blow me off. That's fine. Yeah. You know, I don't, who, who am I to hold it against them? I got it. And he says, if you get it, get the salvation, go tell other people. Well, just because you tell somebody, don't mean they're going to get it. Mm -hmm. Don't mean they're going to change their life right then. I mean, it took me 16 years from the, from the very first, from 16 to 32. That's how long it took me. And then when I converted, it, it was on then. Yeah. Well, it's good to hear you say that because I think that that's what <clears throat> I've been kind of working through not just this week I think it's been a couple weeks maybe that's why I didn't have anything to say last week because I was in a what and, was and, mean and, it, and it's even written down I can't think of it where it's written down but it also says that that dream the prophets in the Old Testament the prophets sometimes they spoke through dreams and sometimes they spoke. yeah but it was few and far between yeah. it wasn't like every week oh, okay it's Wednesday what's God going to tell me today it was few and far between so, and we talked about it when we started doing John on Wednesdays. It, it wasn't all the time. Mm -hmm. So, the, for God to talk to, let's just say, Elisha, and then not talk to him for six months, but Elisha kept going in the direction God wanted him, that's some faith. That's some power. That is a, that must have been an awesome meeting. Yeah, yeah no kidding. And so <clears> that's <throat> where I'm at, and that's what I'm trying to uh, 
lead from that place. Like, um, yeah, you gotta keep in mind, God's not going anywhere. Yeah, He's in the all. same place He's always been. What was that? Didn't you read something a minute ago about uh, in Isaiah about that, that 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 touched on that a little bit? About His Word is Isaiah fifty-five, it's close to the end of fifty-five. Yeah, and it was in ten. Because okay, so that's where my mind was going. Now I'm catching up. So there he, he's months. coming down the home stretch. <laughs> <laughs> I, this mind has uh, got a lot of stuff going on up there, and I've killed a lot of brain cells in my day, so uh, I forget stuff very easily. But yeah, so this is what. So when you read that, I was thinking about the Philippians thing, and then my situation, just how I've been feeling lately, and then so then this. You said what you said was, uh, if God calls you for to do something, if God's will is for this to happen. Mm-hmm. Whether I do it or you do it or not, it's going to happen if it's God's will. The task is going to get done. Someone's going to do And I want it. to say task because if we say will, they, they may not really understand God's will. Well, what does he want? Well, he wants you to do this. Yeah. So he, he wants you to do a certain job or a certain task. Some people just, sometimes I get confused with will. My will will be done. It's like, what? What did you just say? <laughs> yeah. Uh, in in 55, I'm going to start a little bit further back than where you read a minute before we I got I like on. the whole chapter. Yeah. It says in verse 6, Seek the Lord while he may be found, mm-hmm. and call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the evil man his thoughts, and let him turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him and to our God, and he will freely pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. I always use that because it's it, it's so God is on such a higher plane than we are. Like he is, whatever we're thinking and feeling and um, assuming or want to happen is so low to what God probably <laughs> has in and, mind. And I'm with you. It's like, man, that guy's smart. Now, there are some really intelligent people here. I was like, but it's all earthly intelligence. Right. Anything outside this earth, you ain't got a clue. The smartest person on earth is not even touching yeah. God's thoughts. I said, you're, you're very intellect, but your intellect is earthly. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Yeah. He says in verse 8, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is what you read. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without water in the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Mm -hmm. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the pine tree, and instead of briars the myrtle will grow. This will be from the Lord's renown. For an everlasting sign which will not be destroyed. So exactly what you said. God said, my word is going to go out and not return mm-hmm. void. If he gives us a task, like you're saying, a mm-hmm. task to go do, then all we can do is be uh, obedient and surrender to that task as much as we can, mm-hmm. humanly possible, with letting the Holy Spirit guide us. And then if people don't respond or if they don't re- act the way we think they should or, or whatever, it's still going to happen at some point because yeah, what we're putting out there mm-hmm. is is getting to whoever God needed to hear it. Yeah, and a prime example would be, I guess, me to teach. You know, I didn't even want to come to church, and I came to church, and then I was like, I feel like I should be teaching. <laughs> I didn't. I, now this is the guy I didn't even want to go to high school. Mm-hmm. I cared nothing about going to school, and then you know. 10th, 11th, 11th and 12th grade, it was tough for me because I didn't want to be there. And, you know, still graduate, still got my diploma. And I was like, all right, I'm through with school. I'm done. I I did 19 years in school. Okay, <laughs> that's how I was. I, I wanted to push it one more year. <laughs> uh, that was me. And that was it. And I was like, man, I'm finally through with school and then once I started getting wrapped up in the church building in the church body and got salvation and I got baptized and it just started snowballing and you know Mr. Doug and you know I've told that story I've Mm -hmm. hit perfect timing fit right in we've done it together then you know Mr. Doug's not with us anymore and here we are and then I went 
willingly back to school. So he, my desires, his desires came my desires. So I, I didn't want to just talk to people about it. I wanted to know it. And I tell people, I said, when I re-enlist in classes, you know, you got to re-enlist every quarter or semester. They're like, well, what, you know, what's your goal? I said, just knowledge. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it for a job. But I was telling the guy today for on that last job, I said, once I get done with mechanic, I said, I'm just going to evangelize. So that's it. I said, but if God tells me to mechanic till I die, I guess I'll mechanic till I die and evangelize along the way. Yeah, it's pretty amazing that Mr. Doug did have that effect on both of us. I mean, he he caught us both. God used him right when we were both brand new believers mm -hmm. because that was the, one of the first classes I went to after I was born again in, in here. He, his class would have been one of the, maybe the second or third, but one of the first ones I was in. So that's just interesting how God continued to use him. And he was up in his 70s at that point. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm sure he had thoughts of, at some point in those 70 years of was his word going out and no one was responding and, and now here we are so many years later speaking to the impact that he had on us mm -hmm. and so there's someone out there that we're yeah. speaking to now that's not doing what we think they should because for whatever reason we've elevated i've elevated myself to this place like you should listen to me <laughs> yeah. and, he, and in the other men's group that we used to have on thursday uh, uh -huh. you know the guys that led that you know they would get Frustrated. I, I wasn't the leader. I was just kind of supporting it. Uh, Brad and myself were supporting uh, Gordon at the time. Mm -hmm. and, you know, he would get frustrated. You know, like like you, because you think, okay, well, I'm putting all this time and effort in and work, but nothing's happening. And and I had them moments. It's like, man, why am I talking to these people? And then even with that, then there was other things. And then one day God told me, he, he asked me, he said, Mike, he said, what are you supposed to do first? I said, what are you talking about? He said, what is the first thing you're supposed to do? I said, seek your kingdom and your righteousness. He said, then why are you worried about number two when you're supposed to be concerned about number one? Mm. <laughs> so, well, I guess you got a point. <laughs> and so we're supposed to seek the kingdom of God first for ourselves. And then when Jesus said, go to every town, preach to it, if they don't accept it, hey, dust your hands off. Because guess what? There's another town down the road. Mm -hmm. And it's not like if, and I'm not saying it to where if, if I'm talking to you and you just don't get it, I'm not just going to write you off. Okay, well, he's not ready or he's not accepting it or depending on how the conversation goes. Okay, well, that's fine. I'm, I don't have my feelings hurt. I'm going to go talk to the next person. That's not going to stop me from talking to the next person or the next person or the next person. And to add to it is, is Noah. As Billy Graham talked about Noah. You know, he built the boat. It took him 75 years to build it. And he said that whole time he's building the boat, he kept preaching repentance to the people. And how many live people got on that boat? eight people hmm. and he preached for that whole 75 years that boat was being built <laughs> nobody but eight people got on that boat yeah and that was his family the bible is a story of people uh, preaching and teaching and telling about god and, mm -hmm. and hardly anyone listening yeah so i don't know what the difference you know we talked about i think a couple weeks back we were talking about when um, peter preached the sermon and all the people mm -hmm. acts yeah and all the people come, yeah. and they're like, they just imagine all, all of that that came that day. Yeah. 3,000 people come or added to their number. And when it happens, don't look at me. Yeah. I'm like, what am I going to do? No, that's what you want. So I'm sitting You here, handle that. I'm sitting here saying, what are you gonna, uh, I'm I going home. People to respond. <laughs> if we all of a sudden had an influx of people, like 300 people show up one day, um, we may be careful what you wish for, I guess is what they're saying there. So, but yeah, it's good. I'm glad that you are helping me work through this because uh, sometimes I just have to remind myself that it's it's not the sprint. It is a marathon, and I know that. I preach it. I teach it. I understand that, and I believe it. But, man, some days in the middle of it, I'm just like, ah, I just wish somebody would just sprint up. And... There's a saying I heard, and it says, why is the person that gives advice won't take it? Yeah. 
Uh, amen. I believe that. Yeah, the one that preaches it doesn't listen to themselves. Thank you, James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> Is that where that came from? Yeah. <laughs> so, so Paul, I, yeah, the person that gives the advice, why won't they take it? So Paul tells us right there that if you've experienced any of these things, if you've experienced comfort, if you've experienced fellowship, tenderness, compassion, then take my joy and make my joy complete by being like-minded, just like me. Um, then he says in verse 6, um, your attitude, or 5, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in a human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. And then it says, therefore God exalted him uh, to the highest place and gave him a name above every name. Um, that everyone's going to know the name of Jesus and bow, and we know the rest of it. But mm -hmm. it's this whole idea of humility and just it, God's looking at me saying, Russell, I don't care if no one ever comes forward. I don't care if no one ever comes to you and tells you this is the way God's working, this is what's going on. You just keep doing what I told you to do. Mm -hmm. You just keep going forward mm -hmm. and doing your thing. And that's what I, I that, I'm still Can growing in that. It's too. a pursuit. It is a pursuit. <laughs> I always say it's because what you. You've taken on the role yeah. of pastor. Well, you can't really teach if you don't read it. So right. when you read it, you're going to see, see something else because you read books by other people. Yeah. Progressive sanctification. Like it's, uh, it's all, you're always progressing to, for Jesus to set us apart, for God to mm -hmm. set us apart. And I just think, I, I try to tell, talk about what I'm struggling with and what I'm going through because I think it's important for people to see that the role means doesn't make me like super spiritual mature guy all of a sudden i'm still trying to figure it out because mm -hmm. your ways are not my ways and your thoughts are not my thoughts and then paul encourages us in this and then we can get towards the end here but not that i have already obtained all of this he says after he told them you should do all these things imitate jesus don't have confidence in the flesh he says not that i have already obtained all of this or have already been made perfect that I press on to take hold of that for which Jesus Christ took hold of me. I did not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And so that's what... Because acceptance into heaven isn't based on how many people you lead to God. No, it's based on the one heart that God turned to him, me. <laughs> that's it. And then while you were reading that, I know we just got through with Joshua. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, He's setting everything up. Moses is there. Moses is dead. Joshua takes over. Joshua's the mighty leader, led the people in to Jericho and then all the AI and all the other cities, wiped them out. And the very next book after Joshua is Judges. Mm -hmm. Joshua did all that work. And the people turned right around and went right back to where they came from. <laughs> and then the book of Judges are, are basically like mil militant leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the judge upon the, on the gavelin. You know. Order. Uh, Order. And so from Joshua did all that work for all those years. And as soon as he died, then people turned around and went right back to where they came yeah. from. It's been the same story from Genesis all the way to Jonesboro, Georgia, 2021. Mm -hmm. Like when 1st. Moses was getting the Ten Commandments. They were down there Aaron, the first priest. <laughs> Melting down rings and necklaces into yeah, a golden calf. and God's telling Moses, look, I haven't even given you the ten rules yet, the guidelines, and they're down there breaking them before I even give them to you. <laughs> it was kind of wild. And then, you and know, Moses, Moses went down there and Aaron, what are you doing? Well, we weren't sure where you went. And Moses got mad, bust them. Like now I gotta go back tired. up the freaking mountain. And people were getting tired of waiting. And wait another forty days. <laughs> God is good to us because uh just the whole Bible obviously is a story of God's grace and his mercy on a bunch of fools. Because we the way he works in our life I mean, I should be just motivated every day just from knowing where God saved me from. From well, where not. No. Where not. Not every day. Now some days I wake up and literally will be in tears over like where I could have been, where I know I've been, and now what the the platform God's got me on, and I'm just like, man, He'll break me down some days. That's that's that God love. We'll we'll never understand it. If we yeah. Get there. It's like 
I love Levi, my son. I would do, I'd give my life for him. Mm-hmm. I'd take lives out of here to protect him. But there are days, <laughs> I said, I think I'd rather punch you in the head <laughs> than look at you right now. He's looking back like it's, I wish you would punch me in the head. It's that love, yeah. you know, and there's, and God's love is no, can't compare it. Now, he uses the analogy of a parent's love, a father's discipline and stuff. But that's just so we can understand. Mm-hmm. But we'll never fully understand it, exactly his love, till we get there. Yeah. So I would uh, encourage everyone listening and watching to pray for your leaders. Pray for people like myself and Mike and other people that are spiritual leaders in your life. Because And if you pray in the... Sun doesn't come up at midnight or anything. Don't don't sweat it. It'll be all right. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It, because there's a certain responsibility that comes along with when you're leading people, and uh, man, I think we both just have this passion to we want to do it to the best of our ability, not for ourselves, but we just want people to experience what we've experienced. And so pray for us. Pray for your leaders. Pray for people that are uh, around you because God is He's working. I mean, there's some really cool things going on. The fact that we're still here. Um, on this corner after 175 years. The fact that through COVID, uh, we're still here and bills are still paid and and people are still being saved and baptized is a miracle in itself. And so I'm still learning to find that contentment that Paul preached about in Philippians. I'm all in Philippians today because 413 is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, I can't go out and run a marathon. I mean, if Christ wants me to, I could. But what he was saying there was, I can do all things if I can if it's within his will. I know what it's like to have a lot. I know what it's like to have a little. I'm got to find contentment in there, and it may be um, the feast or famine. Um, it may be, and we may be in a season of famine, and you know we may think people are spiritually dead. We may think the people are apathetic, or the community is just like here's the answer. It's Jesus. Just jump on board, and he'll change our community. I promise. His word says it will. From here on out. Yeah. <laughs> And when people don't do that, then it becomes like, ah, just get it. And so it's like, I'm out. This isn't panning out how I thought it was going to. That's exactly right. And thank God that he didn't say, I'm out. That mm-hmm. this isn't panning out how I thought it was yeah. going to. He would have bailed on us. He told Peter, like, man, you need to get by me. Yeah. This is what I come here for. Yeah. And so we want to be praying for us. So, uh, pray for the people uh, in Afghanistan that are going through just God awful stuff that we can't even fathom probably in this world because we are so spoiled and over here in the United States but there's things going on there that are probably just unmentionable and then we get upset when the internet goes out I mean yeah if my wifi's slow I'm mad and these These people have like bullet holes and bomb shells in the side of their house people standing I watched a newscast that from um some news station over there that he just had on yesterday and there were the guy doing the news like I'm doing right now sitting in front of a microphone and there were two guys right behind him with AKs or like uh-huh. M60 whatever uh, it was just make sure you tell our story unbelievable yeah tell the right story we'll tell yeah. the truth now. unbelievable so we're praying for those people we're praying for the people in Haiti that had uh, the storms come through we're praying for the people in New Orleans that had everything go through and here we sit on a beautiful sunny day outside nothing air conditioning on in this room and it feels really, good outside. Really nothing to complain about. Breezy today. Just uh, living in the blessings that God allowed us to experience. And so I'm grateful. I'm thankful for a church that supports. I, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for a church that I'm able to be honest with. I'm, I love the fact that I can step up on Sunday morning and tell you, this is what I've been struggling with this week. You know, this is where I'm at. And people don't go, what's wrong with this guy? He's supposed to be the pastor. They, they're they more than that. They embrace it and they say, we understand it. And they're rocking with me. And, you know, so I'm going to keep keep going. I, don't, I have no idea what God's doing in my life, uh, in the church's life, in this world. You know, I'm just, I don't know what he's doing, I'm just, but I, I'm, I'm all for him. <laughs> I'm all for him. I just don't know how he's working at all. I wish, it, I wish he would let us in on like just a peek at what he was doing, so, but we would probably mess that up. We would try to alter it or not like something. And because I saw something you didn't see. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I know a little something. And then there'd be all that. So yeah, so it's probably better that we don't know. Um, so we just keep pressing forward because God is good. And I was talking to we're a guy blessed. today. He, he's employed. You know, I'm not. I'm not employed anywhere. <laughs> I'm just I go job to job I'm like a gypsy. <laughs> <laughs> he's, but he's a he's a believer. Mm-hmm. You know, he he claims to believe and go to church and all that good stuff that goes along with it. 
And he said, we can't talk about religion and we can't take talk about politics. You know, where he was employed at. And I said, yeah, I was like, how dare you give people hope? <laughs> I said, don't you give them no hope. <laughs> I said, but me, when I get there, I can talk about it because I don't work for them. Yeah. They can't fire me. No, that's, really, that's really what it's all about. I mean, the hope. That's what the whole scripture is yeah, for. Yeah, I said, how that's dare you hope. want to give people hope for life? Yeah. How so to get out of here alive. Hopefully people are relating to you and I. They go out there work every day. They have their struggles. They're trying to raise kids. They're trying to be good husbands. Um, and, and it's just life. So hopefully they can see a little bit of their life through our conversation and know that in all of that, God is using you and I. Like no matter what we mess up or think, God is still using us, and so I hope people and, are encouraged by yeah. it. And the thing about the, the podcast, whether it's on YouTube or on the Apple, or mm-hmm. Spotify, wherever, wherever it's at, and I told the guys in the class, I said, we don't know who's listening to this. Mm-hmm. We have no idea, unless right. they tell us. So there, if you're out there and you're curious, you can listen and not have to tell nobody. Mm-hmm. So it's okay because sometimes <laughs> it's like I don't know what's going on in my life. Because when when you get salvation, you accept Christ. He's he's a weird dude. He's gonna come <laughs> in and do some weird stuff in your life that you're not used to. He changed the world more than any human, uh, more than any. And he was here for thirty three years. Yeah, didn't know nothing about him till he was thirty. Yeah, he was born. It was a, a supernatural birth. Some some astrologists came from wherever they're like we're here's some gifts for that baby you just had it's like well who are you that's not important <laughs> we read these maps and these stars and we're here then then we hear nothing and then at 12 we have a little incident a little story, yeah they leave where, him in the temple yeah where he got drawn into the temple and the high priests were like man this this kid's got something. Mm-hmm. And then nothing. And all of a sudden, he comes walking up the banks of the Jordan River to a dude that looks like me in the water. He's like, baptize me. It's like, no, you need to baptize me. He's like, no, we got to do it this way. Yeah. And then from that point on, he's changing the world. He changed the world. Unbelievable. Um, you're right. It's such a weird it's story. It's a weird he guy. told that way, but, <laughs> but he is like, He's done more th- than anyone ever has, and he changed. And he still talked about today. Yeah, and still changing lives for today. Like, it's just an unbelievable thing that that's where you really got to have that faith. Because when you start right. saying, like, you just said it so easily, Jesus was here, and then he was 12, and then he was 30, and it's like, It, it took a while, because I've, I've been in it for, I think, 12 years now. Yeah. So it's, it's not overnight. For some people, it, it could be. Not for me. No, yeah, not for me either. So like, subscribe, share uh, all your friends, all that good stuff, and, and let us know. Give us some feedback. What did you like? What do you want us to talk about? We, we can talk about anything. Mike and I can sit here and keep going. Um, but I think today's episode was, was to remember that we're not battling against flesh and blood. If people are getting on your nerves, if things aren't happening the way they're supposed to, remember that it's a bigger battle than what's happening. There are spiritual things going on and what God has called us to do while he's handling the heavy lifting of the spiritual battles. What he's called us to do is be obedient in our day-to-day walk and just continuing to rely on him and to tell as many people we can Mm -hmm. about him and live our lives in such a way. I did hear this cool thing. Did your wife share with you that TikTok video of the girl this morning? No, she didn't. She, she sent I it to me. I don't watch a lot of the things that she sent. Well, you should watch the one that she sent this one. It was really cool because it was about, um, they were talk, it was a ladies Bible study and they were going over being refined in the fire is the point. There's a scripture that says that. And so what it's they did for, was. Uh, Peter. They, yeah. And so, yeah, that's exactly what they were talking about. And then. You're uh, welcome, that's, Pastor. <laughs> that's part, you know, <laughs> hey, look, there's a lot of stuff I, going we're on. We're supporting there. each other. There's a. Uh, as part of their study was the girl, one of the ladies said, I'm going to go find a silversmith and I'm going to go hang out with him for one day and find out why did God put that in scripture, like to be refined by the fire and all this stuff. And so he was explaining to her how holding it right in the hottest part of the fire washed out the impurities and did all these things. The and, and she said, well, how do you know when it's done? Like, how do you know when you've got, and he said, when I can see my reflection in it. And I was just like, oh, wow. 
That's like that's God true. so much. I mean, that's what we're called to be, the reflection of God to people. And he's putting us through this fire. Like life every day is a fire and, and he's burning out all these things until he can see the, his reflection in us. Yes, and so that was yeah. that blew my mind. So that was kind of that was really cool to, to hear and see. So um, I appreciated her sending that. But God is good, guys. Thank you for tuning in and following us each week. We appreciate you guys. Um, spread the word, spread God's word, and uh, keep loving people. God bless. We'll talk to you next time. Yeah.